never done before because I want to protect you, the American sports audience. But before that, we go to New York via the Coward Global Satellite Network. My friend Nick Wright, first things first, 6.30 every morning. Okay, there's a story Jerry West says, and you and I both love the NBA. Uh, NBA is yeah. great. I love it. I, I watch it, yeah. uh, you know, every night there's a game on somewhere in my house. Uh, Jerry West says, we are going to be the number one sport. I don't buy it for a second. You're an NBA guy. Do you? I I wouldn't dismiss it out of hand. I would remind America that over the last hundred years, five sports has, have held the championship belt, so to speak. Horse racing was the biggest sport. Boxing was the biggest sport. Baseball has been the biggest sport. Basketball for a brief period of time was the biggest sport. And, of course, football for the better part of the last 25 or 30 years has been the biggest sports. But So it is somewhat cyclical. And the NBA as the second most popular sport globally, can pull from, I mean, Chris Porzingis from Latvia, Joel Embiid from Cameroon, Giannis is from Greece. You can pull talent from literally everywhere on the globe except Antarctica. And if you ask a different star, Kyrie Irving, Antarctica doesn't even exist. So, th so they're never going to run out of players. They're never going to run out of great bodies. Where the NBA, though, is... I think it is growing in popularity, but its risk is this. What if LeBron wins the title this year and retires? What happens to the sport? What if LeBron doesn't win the title this year and joins the Warriors? What happens to the sport? When your popularity is so dependent on one person, you're not going to catch the NFL. If Tom Brady retired tomorrow, the NFL wouldn't love it, but they would be okay. The NBA already saw this happen with Jordan's second retirement, where yep. it went through its biggest lull that we've seen in 35 years from basically 99 to 04. Shaq and Kobe's Lakers were there. It was still at an all-time low in popularity. They, this is why they need Embiid and Giannis and Chris Stapps to hit their full potential, because at some point, no point soon, but at some point, LeBron's going to be done. Yeah. Uh, so, listen. I played a random game this morning. I picked two teams. They just happened to be Oklahoma City and Indiana. And I looked at those teams, and here's what was remarkable. That Westbrook gets Mello and Paul George, and the team's wins and points and field goal percentage and assists are down. And Indiana, I just picked another random team, gets Victor Oladipo and Sabonis. And now one's an all-star, and the other guy's numbers have doubled. It is interesting, don't you think, that Mr. MVP has struggled through the first half of the year joining with other great players. And Indiana appears to be flourishing with players that yeah. left Westbrook. Yeah, it is interesting. It is interesting that Victor Oladipo, after a year of learning from Russell Westbrook, is playing the best <laughs> basketball of his life. That Victor Oladipo, by the way, not Kyrie Irving, has been the best guard in the East this year. That is interesting. I'm glad you were able to bring that up. <laughs> listen, you don't like Russ. You, you, you. I, 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 you, I still listen. I still watch, even though I'm not in L.A. He, he's a weird guy who reminded you of some neighbor in Portland who, I guess, had his dog poop in your yard, and so because of that. You're just anti-Russ. I don't get it. I I understand what you do very often, and I heard the great monologue on, on this, I think it was Monday, is you compare Russ to LeBron, and Russ is going to come up short in every category because you're comparing him to the greatest in his field ever. There are some really good sports radio hosts that are not Colin Cowherd. It doesn't mean they're trash. They're just not the best who's done it. Like, R Russ... Russ has some blind spots. Russ has some p parts of his game that actually might, in, in a vacuum, hurt his team. But the overall package of Russell Westbrook is a package that, in the worst-case scenario, is the eighth greatest basketball player in the world, and the best-case scenario is fourth or fifth. It's absurd to me, as much as I love you, how much time you spend tearing down a guy who is Clearly, unanimously, obviously, one of the ten best in the world at what he does, but you had that neighbor in Portland and never got over. <laughs> okay, this is why I bring Nick on. All right, so listen, um, I, you know I, Sam Darnold's going to be a great NFL player. I don't even think the Cleveland Browns can wreck him. Uh, and if I was Cleveland, I would pick him. So Cleveland, the draft, the combine starting next week, and the, the draft's in April, and we both like the draft because we both love the NFL. Cleveland's got the number one and the number four pick. You have a theory. Yeah. You have a theory on this. 
Well, I just think quarterbacks in the top ten historically, they're about a 50-50 proposition. Your odds of succeeding on a 50-50 proposition are obviously 50%. If you flip a coin twice, your odds of getting it wrong both times, a 50-50 proposition, go from 50% to 25%. It does not matter who you draft at number four, Minka Fitzpatrick, Saquon Barkley, any of those other great players, if the quarterback you draft at one doesn't hit. So I would draft a quarterback at one and a quarterback at four and let them compete. And hopefully you got them both right. And you just have the best the two good options and you trade the other one next year. Cleveland will continue to be terrible until they fix their quarterback situation. If you can double your odds of getting the quarterback right with the fourth overall pick, then do it. Why would you not do it? Especially if the Giants don't take a quarterback. We know the Colts aren't. You can have your pick of the two best quarterbacks in a quarterback-rich draft. There, there is no the, the downside to that is what? Well, if we miss on one of them, then we've wasted a pick. But that might have been the guy you took one, in which case you'd be screwed. Like, no team has done this, but there has never been a team that hasn't had a quarterback for 30 years that has two top four picks in a quarterback-rich draft. I, it, the, the Washington kind of did it when they took RG3 and Kirk Cousins. Turned out it was good they had Kirk Cousins. This would be that on steroids. It's something that I think they should at least consider. By the way, the Minnesota Timberwolves did this. They picked Ricky Rubio and Johnny Flynn, and that was a disaster. Y yeah, but that's so different. Like, they, you, I mean, the, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the NBA is not about do you have a point guard. It's about do you have the best players. That would have worked great, by the way, had they taken Steph Curry with one of those. They just picked the wrong guys. They passed on Steph Curry twice. But if Minnesota Timberwolves like, we have to get a point guard. We don't know if it's Rubio or Steph. So they took them both. We would be applauding them for it. Instead, they took Rubio and my Syracuse guy, Johnny Flynn, who just – he hurt himself and couldn't play. But I, I, I don't think that's a totally fair comparison. Okay. I should just let you go. You've been so good today. But I have to ask you a question. I've been polling yeah. everybody. And I, I have this kind of belief that it used to be the Olympics were special on television because you got one baseball game a week and one NBA game a week. And so the Olympics were the only time in my life as a kid where you got three weeks of sports. Every night on TV for like eight hours. But now everything's on TV. I can, watch, I can watch Xavier's entire college basketball season. I can watch Boise State's entire football season. So the Olympics aren't special because I get sports every night. I'm not watching the Olympics. Are you? I, I'm not watching much of the Winter Olympics, but I know this might shock the audience. You're a little bit older than me, so you grew up when it was a big deal. Anything was on TV other than Gunsmoke, so I understand why <laughs> it had a very, very key part of your heart. Yeah. I, basically, my whole life, there have been a lot of sports on a lot of TV channels. I, if it were the Summer Olympics, I'm watching every night. This is more about the fact that I'm not a skier, I'm not a snowboarder, I'm not a biathlete, so I can't really relate totally and fully to the events that are being played. So I'm not watching them every night, but it's not because I've got a thousand channels. It's because I can't do a backside 1080. <laughs> Terrific performance. By the way, the weather in New York, it was 70 yesterday, was it not? Yeah, it's 70, which is interesting. You don't bring it up because obviously New York's the superior city to Los Angeles, especially when the weather's nice. So now we don't lead with it. When, when, it's, when it's crummy here and sleeting, you're like, how's that weather, Nick? Shipped you out east. How are you liking that, Manhattan Beach is gorgeous. I'll talk to you never, Colin. All right, Nick Wright. Let's hear it for Nick. Tremendous performance today. Disagreed with me on virtually everything via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Okay. Remember when our president wore Make America Great Again? I am going, I need a hat. Okay. Make American fans informed again. I am going to protect. Were they ever? Uh, something informed? happened this morning, Christine, and our fans need to be protected. Okay. Something happened, and I've never done this, and I'm going to do it next, and I'll explain right around the corner. Every business needs great people, and there is a better way to find them. Something better than posting your job online and just praying for the right people to see it. I can remember when we used to have, like, post-it notes. You put it at work. Need oh, this. I use post-it notes all the time. Yeah. Like, now you can use ZipRecruiter. 80% oh. of the employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a candidate, a quality candidate, through the site in a day. They don't miss a match. They have matching technology that is unrivaled. They go out and find the candidates and then connect the candidates to you. 
Businesses small and large use it. My listeners can use it now for free. ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire due to smart matching technology. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash herd. ZipRecruiter.com slash H-E-R-D. If you post a job, it will immediately go to the hundred or more top job sites. ZipRecruiter.com slash herd. Paul's been having a difficult time.